Howdy, y'all. I'm Adam, the Renaissance Nerd. Guys, we did it. We soldiered forward. We made our way through the muck, through the stands and the shills and the trolls, and we completed the journey. That was Rings of Power Season 1, and what a journey it was. If you haven't, I invite you to go check out all my reviews. Ah. This is a sad, sad show made by sad, sad people who don't have an ounce of creativity or understanding of what fans really want. How do we know this? Because these are people who are second generation bad reboot spawn. Patrick McKay and J.D. Payne, Lindsay Weber, they're not even first gen. These are, these are Alex Kurtzman acolytes. <laughs> Well, maybe not Lindsay Weber, but McCain and Pay, they're not even they didn't even learn directly at the knee of Jar Jar Abrams, the destroyer of franchises. These people learned from Kurtzman. So it's it's second generation rejects. But they were given billion dollars to make crap fan fiction in the most venerated franchise in fantasy history. The first, the original, the foundation. J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. What does it mean, though, now? This show has, it's an unmitigated failure. You have watched us, myself and many others, review this over the past couple of months. You have seen numerous streams break down these episodes, and maybe so, even if you were brave enough, you watched it with us. You watched the episode, too, so you could keep track of what we were going nuts over. Anybody with a working brain knows this show is a failure. But that doesn't mean it's over yet. Season one is over, but Rings of Power is not because second season underway already filming in the United Kingdom. What does that mean? It means we're two years away. Minimum. Two years away. There's a lot of implications on that. One. <laughs> with, with a show that has gone down in flames completely, how, what interest can they possibly maintain for two years about something that is not Lord of the Rings? Can you keep the attention of the stands and the little and, and the little fake fans that have been promoting this and saying how great it was? No, because these are nat-brained individuals who flit around from one thing to another and have the intention span of literally an infant, because they are infantile in their minds. They're not adults. They're not normal people. Season two is underway, as I said, and we're now already, they're already trying to change the narrative of how bad season one was. Yesterday dropped an article from Deadline interviewing Lindsay Weber, McKay, and Payne. And remember, McKay and Payne share a brain, so whichever one is speaking, it's the same thought. It's the same belief the same fake but Lindsay Weber she came out and she really showed us <laughs> word salad what we're going to read now are just a couple excerpts from the articles a lot of it is fluff but there are a couple things about season two in here and I warn you now it's extreme word salad so we're going to do our best to parse it and kind of figure out what the hell is going on here already all right let's go <clears throat> Deadline asked the question to Lindsay Weber, where are you in terms of the second season right now? All right, we're going to read this and we'll break it down. Lindsay Weber, the first few days are like kind of a luxury for us because we're just beginning and the guys are still writing, you know, polishing the script for season two. So they're writing that. But if you wait a minute, we'll be scattered to the corners and editing rooms and different sets and different locations, different directors and filmmakers and prep meetings and post meetings and all the things. And it's like you have to sort of be an octopus to have a tentacle everywhere at once. Whoa there, lady. This ain't, uh, this ain't a hardcore bad anime we're talking about here. This is uh, supposed to be Tolkien. No octopi allowed. No tentacle, no tentacle porn allowed. <laughs> Also, I think the beginning of season one, there's just so much that's new and you have to see how your actors are going to do and how the material is going to feel 
and how the balance of it works. Going into Season 2, we have the benefit of having built these relationships, both the relationships of the characters and the relationships of the actual human cast, and we're the incredible beneficiaries of that thing and being this is much further down the road. Okay, let's see what she just said here. She just said a whole lot of nothing. Now, whether or not this was a coached question for, from Deadline to Weber, we don't know. But the Deadline question asked, where are you in terms of Season 2? What that meant is, what storylines do you possibly have set up for Season 2? That is what a person actually wants to hear. Instead, Lindsay Weber goes on for two paragraphs about nothing. This is pitch, picture-perfect producer word salad. We don't care that... You just started writing it. We don't care what it takes to polish a script. We don't care where every, everybody's going to be once a script is done. What are you working on storyline-wise? What are you talking about? What, what are you going to do? Where, what's going to happen? How are you going to butcher Tolkien some more? And then talking about how everybody gets along well? Who cares? I mean, word salad. When pushed for an answer, these people respond with word salad. Because they have nothing. They're empty. No creativity. Lindsay Weber's probable uh, um, co contribution to all of this is, how can we make this more woke? How can we get make this more girl bossy? That's probably it. Moving on, we continue later on. Deadline. I guess your life is, they try again to answer. Maybe we give Deadline a little bit of credit. I mean, they're a shill. Maybe give them a little bit bit of credit of trying to find out what's going on with the show in terms of content. Not just production, but content. Deadline. Uh, I guess your life is deep into season, season two production. We're a, we are two weeks in. <laughs> We're two weeks in, guys. Come on. Didn't you consider saving what we saw in the JD and Patrick Penn finale for that? Weber. It's funny you ask that. There are things that we saved that were going to be in the final bit of the season that we thought, oh, it's just too big right now to do, to fit that in with everything else, and let's save it. And we're actually doing some of those things now in season two. Whoa, wait a minute. You mean the season finale where there was at least 40 minutes of bloat out of the hour? There, were, there was at least 30 to 40 minutes of bloat in the season finale. You did not need the 15-minute Harfoot goodbye scene. You didn't need anything that had to do with Numenor because you started stuff and you left it hanging. That's not that's not cliffhanger. That's just poor connectivity, not following through. We you left the dwarf stuff from last week with the Balrog reveal, which we already knew, and then the reveal of Halbrand is Sauron, which everybody's known since before the show even started. The leaks were all true. Each and every leak was true. So saying we left things and we're saving it, the episode was too big right now to do. No, you made a bloated carcass of an episode filled with nothing. Two things of note happened. Three, if you really want to branch off. One, the confirmation that Halbrand is Sauron, which we all already knew. Two. They made the costume jewelry that were the, the three elven rings. Costume jewelry. I pointed out my review to yesterday. I'm going to point it out again today. This is the rings of power. This is what Peter Jackson gave us. You note the difference. One looks awesome. One looks genuine. The other one looks like you bought it at a, uh, a Hot Topic. If they even sell dry, I don't know. I'm trying to pick one of those random mall mall stores where they sell shit for little children or 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 goth wannabes. I don't know what goes on a hot topic. I'm an adult male. Okay, after that deadline asks, really, Lindsay Weber continues, yes, I think it's really exciting to be exploring them and have the room to do it the way they really wanted to so we weren't giving anything short shrift. Again, what are you talking about? That's word salad. Does the exploration include new characters? Oh, Patrick McKay chimes in. Searden 
will be a part of the adventure moving forward in season two. We've cast a wonderful actor to play him, and we will announce at some future date. But part of the fun in telling a story of Middle Earth is that there's all these wonderful canon characters that you've met in season one. Like who? We've met all of three canon characters that I can think of in season one. Because the other ones are bastardizations. Gyladriel, Warrior Queen. Femrond. His boyfriend, well, his 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 older boyfriend, Gelabrimbor, Gilgalad. Okay, that's four. Uh, the Durins, well, Durin the fourth isn't real. He shouldn't exist. Uh, there is a Durin the fourth, but not that guy. Uh, let's see. Sauron? Well, that's not, a, uh, Halbrand's not an actual avatar of Sauron. They couldn't use Anatar, the Lord of Gifts. So they fudged it and made something else and said, oh, I give you a gift. That, that wasn't there. What? Who else? Uh, uh, nobody. Nobody. What a ri what actual canon characters are there? Finrod? That wasn't really him. That was some dude lusting after his little sister. What else? Uh, uh, I can't think of anything else. Because you, 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 you disappeared, Kelleborn. <laughs> doing it again. Kelleborn, you disappeared him. What else you got for me? Nothing. There were no canon characters in this show. You buffed it out with a bunch of fake fanfic self-insert characters. Disa, Lenny Henry. <laughs> Durin the Fourth is a fanfic character in this. He's not the real Durin the Fourth. Oh, uh, uh Elendil. Oh god, Elendil's real, and so is a Sildur, but they're 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 femi they're femboy versions of their actual stuff. Do you see what I mean? The, this got to oh, all these wonderful canon characters. We didn't meet any canon characters. You had a bunch of fanfic characters in this show. So F you, McKay. Huh, and then there are additional canon characters that we'll get to in future seasons. Ah, <laughs> you're going to bastardize more. <laughs> if you know the lore, you know anybody is fair game who might have been a part of the world this time. Well, anybody is fair game if you had access and rights to actual Tolkien stuff, which you don't. That's why you couldn't use Anatar the Lord's Lord of Gifts. Lazy, fake fan. Lindsay Weber. Season two is fundamentally different in that our main villain is out and about and we're doing his thing. I think in some ways it's going to be grittier, more intense, and maybe a little scarier. Certainly, it has a lot of the same other tonal ranges that you find in the show, which we feel are really sort of fundamental to feeling like you're in Middle Earth. But once Sauron is opening on the move and working his plans, things get rather interesting. <laughs> what did she say right here? It's going to be the same, but it's not going to be the same. There's going to be similar toes, but it might be scarier. Sauron might be interesting if he's there walking around. He was there the whole time. What did she say? She said absolutely nothing there. Absolutely nothing. It's retarded. It's stupid. It's This is somebody who has no idea what's going on with this show. None. Lindsay Weber has no idea what's going on. She's pretending to sound like so. Uh, to say that there is a lot of the same other tonal ranges that you find in the show, the tone of the show is... Event happens to make another event happen. That is the tone of this show. The tone is girl bosses telling all men what to do. Girl bosses being Karens. Characters stealing other characters' arcs and making it their own. That's the tone of this show. Between Guy Ladriel and Femrond, they stole all of Kella Brimbor's mojo. They took his stories. It's that simple. All right, last part here. Deadline. Sounds like you really have the full five seasons pretty mapped out. <laughs> oh, boy. Weber, here, look at this is a dodge. This is a dodge and a half. You know, things evolve a bit. From, but from even before I signed on for this job, the guys really wanted to devise a story that would work from the service level the first time and then would work on a whole new level when you saw it again with the full knowledge of the season. 
I would even say after you've seen future seasons, go back and look on those things again and view them in a new light. They really have a very careful plan. And as a producer, it's really exciting to work with filmmakers like that because you know they can do so many exciting things and build so many layers into it. There are lots of things in there that will be a source of debate and fan engagement and discovery for people for a long, long time. She just said absolutely nothing in any of that. She they asked her basically point blank, this sounds like you have the five season planned out, which basically says what's going to happen for the next four seasons. She says nothing because you know what? They have no plan. They have no idea what they're doing. They wrote a fanfic for season one. It has been resoundingly rejected. Somewhere, some executives in Amazon who still are going to keep their jobs are breathing down their necks because they just lost a billion dollars. Billion dollars. Wasted. This is word salad saying, oh, you have to rewatch something else in order to get the full feel of it so you see the layers of what came before so you understand it so you make sure you get what's happening in the later season but it makes more better sense when you go back for the first season which will inform you on this. That's, that's the kind of bullshit she just said. This show is a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Well, not for us because, well, we enjoyed raking it across the cold. This is what happens when fake fans are given the reins of something beloved, something pure, something good. This is why it was rejected immediately. Because Lord of the Rings fans, Tolkien fans, could see this coming a mile away. Especially when they were attacked right out of the gate by these same people. Lindsay Weber, Patrick McKay, J.D. Payne calling us now patently evil because we don't get how great Guy Ladrill Warrior Queen is. Two years. Two years minimum until we get season two. As I said before, that's a long time. You and I, we're not going to forget this. We're fans. We have long memories. Long, detailed memories. We hold on to stuff. We remember this. The fake shills, the stands, the fake fans, they're going to memory hole a lot of this. They're not going to hang on. They're going to flit away, disappear. And when we're going to be ready, keeping our powder dry, whenever a bit of information comes out like this, we're going to report on it. We're going to show you how stupid it sounds, how bad it looks. When they resort to attacking us again, we're going to let you know. But we're going to be ready. Season two is confirmed. It's happening. Season three. I believe there'll be an escape hatch clause and they're going to bail on this. Time will tell if I'm right. Either way, you stand strong. We won this. This is our win. The fans won. Let's take a moment, take a breath, have a little victory party. You can join us tonight on This Is Mortal Country, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, right here on this channel, where the panel and I will rip apart this finale. We will celebrate. But we're not going to sit on our laurels because we know this is just one theater in the large war that we are having for our culture and pop culture. But this is a big win. Feel good about it. You supported me and everybody else who pushed back against this. This is your win as much as ours. But again, we're not done. We're going to stay vigilant, and we have to keep fighting on all fronts. We cannot give up, and this shows you can rebuff this, these horrible people who try to destroy what we love. All right, I'm done. Thank you watching this video if you enjoyed it a like would be very much appreciated if you are new here i invite you to subscribe to me right here on youtube where i hope to earn your trust and support using facts and logic because facts and logic do not care about fake fans stands and sjw fifis hit the notification button share my video if you like what i'm preaching and by all means leave comments love to hear from you real folks out there because i'm just like you i'm a fan and i know that you're sane who i don't care about the stands the fake fans and the sjw's don't care who they are, will never care who they are, because to a one, they are cowards behind keyboards. And I can't wait for this video, future videos, and future streams to trigger them into bubbling, frothy frenzies. Thank you again for watching this video. Take it easy.
Thanks for watching, everybody. If you want to get in touch with me, you can reach out to me at therennerd at gmail.com. That emails for channel business only, so I check it on a daily basis. Also, you can find me at the Geeks and Gamers forums under at Roas, and you can find me at Rumble and Odyssey, the Renaissance Nerd. Thank you again. See you next time.